Hey everyone and welcome back to my channel. I have another different video for you today. Um, I got some new markers from my cousin slash twin. Uh, we are 16 years apart with different parents, but we are twins. <laughs> A whole family would tell you so. She got me some Spectrum Noir markers from, I believe, Tuesday morning. They were $4.99, at least that's what the tag said before I took them off. And I wanted to try my hand once more at a actual review. I really dropped the ball last time with the Ohuhu versus the Copics, though that wasn't really a review. But I just didn't talk that much about the Copics, so I'm going to try better this time. But she got me the red set, the green set, the blue set, and the brown set. And then, I don't know if they're from the same place, because they don't have the same sticker on them. But she got me some gel pens too, so hopefully I can find something to do with those. These are, I'm going to read this straight from the package. I left them in the package so you could see how they come. They are double-ended, hence the two ends. Blendable, I sure hope so. And refillable, which was really cool. On the back, it says six alcohol markers for paper, fabric, glass, wood, metal, ceramic, and more. Professional quality, excellent value, chisel and bullet tips. Mm, bullet. I'll make the best of it. Comfort grips, airtight cap, seamless blending. Again, we'll see. Fast drying, permanent, non-toxic, acid-free, replacement chisel, bullet, brush nibs, and ink refills available separate. That I have not seen from any of the cheaper markers. So that I found was really cool and it shows you the little package of new sparkly, I don't know if you can see it, there we go, new sparkly nibs and then the refillable ink that I'm guessing you would find on their website. But yeah, I have not decided what I will draw so I'm going to sketch something up off camera and swatch these since I'm not a fan of the swatching on camera. <laughs> I always skip that part of a review just because, I don't know, it's just not my thing. But I will be back and we will get to coloring. So I opened up the green package and I found this swatch sheet underneath I thought was really cool. Um, apparently all of these are also sets. I have these two Actually, these three and the last one. So there's pinks, purples, turquoise, yellows, pale hues, warm gray, cool gray, and essentials. Not a lot of skin colors. Maybe this one. This one, hopefully. This one will probably be my skin color for whatever picture I do. But other than that, they're really yellow or really orange. So we will see how these work out. Now we're going to color. And just to go over what overall supplies I'm using for this picture, I am using my Ohuhu sketchbook. It is the hardbound 8.3 by 8.3 inches. So it's the, the smaller square, but not the smallest square. I will use a white Posca marker, white gel pen, and a white colored pencil just to try and lighten this up a little bit because the colors were super dark. <laughs> I've actually had the chance to step away from it for a while and not look at it and it's not as dark as I remember, at least on video. I haven't looked again at it in person. I recorded this, oh boy, it was supposed to be published February 20th, but then I got COVID and I had a funeral to go to and all this stuff, so I'm just now getting to it. So this will probably, I said February 20th, didn't I? I meant January 20th. February 20th is when it will be published. So you can finally check that out <laughs> if you're wanting to. And like I said, I recorded this a long time ago and then stepped away from it, but thankfully, because this is the real first I don't really count my previous video with the Ohuhu versus Copic because it wasn't really a review, it was more comparison. So this was my first real review, so I took notes. And some of my notes were, 
that it does bleed through the paper, but so do almost every single marker, Copics included, so I wasn't really shocked by that. It didn't bleed through terribly much, so it was actually better than some of the markers, some of the cheaper markers that I got from like Tuesday morning or other places, Daiso, I think. Those bled through a lot worse than these did, so they actually didn't really bleed through that bad, all things considering. They were extremely juicy, which was perfect because for a lot of this picture, I used the chisel nib, which I don't normally do, but I tried it during this one because there were a lot of open spaces that I needed to color, and that worked out really, really well. The chisel nib is pretty large. I looked at it next to the Copic, and I, do, I don't show it in this video, but I did compare them and it's slightly larger and so is the bullet nib compared to like the Daiso markers or the Tuesday morning markers. Unfortunately, no brush tip, but that's okay. <laughs> they worked pretty well with just the chisel and the, the bullet nib. It had a surprising range of colors for a limited set, but saying that, all of them were really dark. I mean, again, I expected this because it is a cheaper set and, well, it's an inexpensive set. And I tried my hardest to use lighter colors to break up some of the darkness. And I think that's what I struggled with the most. Like I said, I had to step away from it for a while to see it not as dark as I thought it was. I mean, the figure is pretty dark with the skin and the hair and the clothes all really close to each other. So I could have done better on that, kind of breaking it up. But I think the background worked pretty well. I used most of the bright colors in the background. And as you just saw, I missed some parts of coloring. I think I did it twice, maybe three times. I just forgot to press record again. My camera is silent. It doesn't scream at me, so I really have to... I can't zone out in color. I really have to pay attention to it because it doesn't scream at me or anything saying, hey, press record. <laughs> so I did miss a little bit, but it wasn't really too important. Uh, some more notes. The comfy grips on both sides were actually really comfy, so they did live up to their name. And it was nice because it helped you grip the marker better. Like they didn't slide or roll off the table. Of course, they did have a strange, it's the six side, six sided shape. Hexagon? It's not octagon, that would be eight. I think it's a hexagon. Correct me if I'm wrong, which I probably am. <laughs> I don't know the fancy shapes by name. <laughs> but it was it was okay to hold. The grip also helped when holding it because it was just an awkward shape compared to like the Copics or the Ohuhus, which are either oval or circle, depending on the marker. So it was it was okay to hold. Uh, the gray line is on the bullet nib side, which is pretty common as well. I think for either the bullet or brush, depending on the marker, the gray line is always on that side because every marker that I have seen has the chisel nib. So the gray would be on the side that's different. A little bit about this picture, since those were all my notes and from what I remember. I drew this girl uh, back in December, I think it was De December, yeah, because the Christmas decorations were still out at my mom's house. This is a gingerbread girl. Now, the decoration is actually a gingerbread girl, but this one I humanized, and I doodled her out because I didn't know what to draw, so I doodled her out while the decorations were still out, and I was thinking what I wanted to draw for this challenge. And I saw the colors and I kind of went back in my sketchbook. I was like, maybe something in here would click 
and help me think of something to draw. So I shimmied through my sketchbook a little bit and I came to her sketch and I was like, oh my goodness, these are the exact colors <laughs> that I need for this character because she's the gingerbread brown for her gingerbread body <laughs> and her dress, parts of her dress. And then she had a green, soft green hat and a red poofy dress. And then the little bow, not bow tie, but the bow around her neck. I don't actually remember how she was dressed on the bottom part of her for the gingerbread girl decoration. So I kind of made that up and I love how she turned out. I want to draw her in my Copic markers since I have a wider range of the Copic markers versus these, but I, I'm actually really impressed with these markers and I like how they turned out. For the background, I knew I wanted to do something, so I just googled, oh goodness, what did I google? Candyland background or something like that and picked a few candies to put in the picture. I didn't go overly crazy because I was limited on colors and like I said the colors were pretty dark so I didn't want it to be just a big old dark piece. So I did some lollipops behind her. I made sure to do a odd number because I remember in school, possibly high school but definitely college, that it's always more visually appealing if you do an odd number versus an even number of stuff. Which, I didn't follow that advice for the gumdrops on the bottom because she's sitting on a really big one and then there's three little ones, so it's four. But I remember being told that it's more appealing to the eye for odd numbers for some reason. If you know why, just comment below because I can't remember. <laughs> I just remember being told that. And I used varying colors on the gumdrops. I pulled the light blue down to be the biggest one that she was sitting on because I, again, it was looking pretty dark in person for the overall picture and I wanted to lighten it up a bit so I used the biggest space to use the lighter color with and then I chose some smaller colors or darker colors to do the smaller gumdrops. I don't know if the big one actually looks like a gumdrop, it kind of just looks like a blue rock, but the little ones do. And then later on I add some white Posca uh, circles, dots, sparkles, not really sparkles, but dots to it so that again it helps lighten it up and so it has like that, those little pieces of sugar on the gumdrops. I don't know what they're technically called, but I know when my mom gets gumdrops, they always have the little sugar bits on them, and it makes it really delicious. Using my gel pen, my Posca paint marker, and my Prismacolor pencil, because I wanted something not as harsh as the gel pen and the Posca marker were making it, I wanted something a bit softer in color just to brighten this up a little bit. And I think that worked out pretty well. Um, it definitely was a softer kind of color for it. Her shoes, again, I kind of made up the bottom of this and looking back, I kind of regret using that dark brown. I could have used the black that I used for her eyelashes. For most of it, I think I can use brown to do the outline color for, but for her eyelashes so they would pop. I used the black micron pin, I forget what size, and I could have done that for her shoes, but I don't know. I guess the really, really dark, almost black brown worked as well. And that's pretty much it. Tell me what you think. See if you want to see more reviews. This was definitely more <laughs> of a review than the last one, so I tried my best. Hopefully you liked it, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye!